Thank you. So where was I? Typical guy, right? We, we don't like to deal with our medical issues. So, so one day I'm dealing with these issues. I've got like, I don't know what's going on, like, like this numb feet, numb legs, and it just keeps getting a little bit worse. So what do I do one day? I go out and ride my motorcycle, right? Because it's a lot of fun, beautiful day, just cruising along, you know, and, and just, just having fun. It was a great day. And so all of a sudden, my something jerks, like grabs my leg and just jerks it back off the bike. Yeah, it was kind of scary. Yeah. So it was kind of like this. I'm riding along, and all of a sudden just boom. You know, and I look down, and my leg's just doing this, just dragging the ground. If you've ever ridden a motorcycle, it's a bad spot to be in. <laughs> but guess what? I couldn't even feel my legs, neither one. I hadn't quite told my wife this entirely. I shouldn't have been riding the bike. I couldn't feel the pegs. I couldn't feel the gas tank. So literally my leg just fell off and it took something pulling it on the ground before I actually realized what happened. So anyway, I've eventually at that point, what do you do? When you almost die, now you go to the doctor, right? <laughs> Typical guys, okay, pre-death, we'll go. You talk me into it. Fine. I'm going. So I initially got diagnosed with this disease called transverse myelitis. And what's ended up uh, after that got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically an incurable brain disease. If you don't know what that is, it's basically an incurable brain disease. I'm just kidding. But it is. It's, it's where the nerves, the, the body kind of attacks the nerves and kind of eats the, it's like a, if you've got a frayed uh, extension cord, it's the same thing on your nerves. And so I have a lot of that issue in my brain and my spinal cord, and that's where the, the this numbness came from. So when you get diagnosed with a disease and you're 29, 30 years old, what do you do? Well, if you're like me, you get really depressed. You go try to quit your job. Um, you think life's over. You know, uh, you know, life's over. I'm gonna be in a wheelchair forever. You know, I have nothing more to give in this world. So let's just quit. And that's what I did. Almost for almost a year, I kind of viewed the world like this, from the couch, laying down. And one day I realized, I kind of watched this great movie and, and where they're going around, they said, bring out your dad. And I was like, they're coming for me. But I was like, no, I'm not dead yet. And I realized I had this brand new baby at the same time. She was just a, just a few months old and she's my youngest. Uh, and she's a little baby and the only girl. And I realized, you know what? In about 10 or 15 years, I'm gonna have to run and fire a shotgun at the same time. <laughs> I've got to get off this couch. I'm not going with you, right? Don't take me. And so I kind of hung onto that and I realized, you know, my wife no longer had her husband. My kids didn't have their father. My job really didn't have me because I just kind of went when I want uh, at that point because they were like, hey, whatever, Dave. Um, <laughs> and so I realized I've got to get back in this game of life. So I go to my doctor and I say, doctor, I want to do a triathlon to get better. My doctor's like, uh, that's nice, David. Uh, you do that. Uh, so if you know anything about multiple sclerosis or MS, you don't necessarily go do a triathlon for therapy, right? Uh, but I, said, I did. I said, I'm going to go. And I, I had a long background in bicycle riding and uh, road racing and mountain bike racing. and did a lot of BMX as a child. And, and uh, so that was kind of my background. So that's what I knew. And I wanted to go do um, a triathlon. So I went out on my run, my first run. I mean, I, I start out, go out there to my driveway, and I start running. I mean, I ran all the way down to the far end of the, of the street. And it about killed me, guys. I mean, my first run, I'm still dealing with this, this kind of new disease. Uh, I was only the second house, so I didn't really go very far. <laughs> but I was like, OK. I can do it. I'm going to crawl back home and go back to bed, right? That was kind of my idea. But I was kind of stubborn. Grew up in Alabama, uh, like a lot of us are. I was like, I'm going to get up the next day, or maybe the day after that, once I recover, and I'm going to run to the industry again. So I kept doing it. I kept practicing that and doing that, and I learned that I never swam before. You know, if you know anything about triathlon, you swim, you bicycle, and you run. So swimming for me was getting in the water and not drowning. I didn't realize you actually had to go somewhere. Okay, so my first time swimming, I had a panic attack, 
And if you ever had a panic attack, you tend to inhale a lot, which if you're underwater, that's a bad idea. Um, and my coach was like, do I need to save this guy? He's supposed to be a drunk. <laughs> like, yes, no. Uh, but I practiced for about a year. It took almost a year where I did my first little uh, kind of mini triathlon. And at the end of that race, you know what happened? Nothing, really. I just finished. Like, it was just, but that is so, such a revelation to me because, you know what, I practiced. I did this, and I, I kind of stuck with it. And I was starting to feel better. I was working more. I was more energetic. I had, you know, I was being more of a father and a husband again. And so I was kind of living my life. And I just kind of did this little crazy uh, triathlon. I was like, I want to do more of these. So I did. So I got introduced to this sport called paratriathlon. Anybody heard of the Paralympics? Right? Okay. So I got involved with an emerging sport, paratriathlon, which is triathlon for people with disabilities. And so I kept practicing and, and getting better and would go to some races. And one of my first world championships, um, it was in Hawaii, Honolulu, terrible venue, I know. I mean, the water is like blue and like you can actually see the fish. And I was scared. Um, but uh, I'm out there with my friend Matt the day before and you gotta go kind of warm up and swim and, and the day before just to stay loose. So I, we go swim and we're, we're out there having a good time. And, and I'm going back to the, to the shore, and Matt's kind of behind me. And so I get out of the water. Oh, I forgot to say, Matt is a below knee amputee, motorcycle wreck. Um, and so picture this. I'm getting out of the water, walking back to our stuff, and all of a sudden I hear, shark, shark, shark. I turn around and I see Matt coming out of the water with one leg. Shark, shark, shark. What are you doing? Like, so I'm being, a, I was really the only person I knew with a disability at that point. I never hung out with other people like, like this that are grabbing life by the horns, no matter what, one leg or, or, or no missing parts of the brain, whatever, just grabbing life by the horn and having a lot of fun. And it's also fun watching the women and children going, ah, what do we do? And the lifeguards were not so enthusiastic. <laughs> But so, yeah, we left <laughs> at that point. Uh, can we come back tomorrow? There's kind of this race we're going to do. Uh, so, uh, but in that race, there's this guy named Cedric. I want to tell you about him a little bit more because Cedric was from France, and he beat the snot out of me. I mean, like, so bad. I think he went home and took a nap at the finish and came back and watched me finish. I was like, I will never beat this guy ever. Uh, but I kept racing, and the years went by. And all of a sudden I realized, you know what? We're, we're not there because we're disabled. We're there because we want to kick somebody's rear end. In a triathlon, if you're gonna do a race, you want to win, right? That's, that's one of the points. And that's what it became. And that's how everybody is. People are humans. We want to compete. We want to have this fun experience and win and have, and have a, you know, just like everybody else want to do. So people with disabilities have special needs, but we're not really special. I'm a human, just like you. People with disabilities are humans that want to compete and have a good time. Uh, but I made a lot of good friends. Uh, Cedric from France, great guy. My friend James from Great Britain, uh, Sebastian from Germany, and all these people had various types of disabilities, and that we would just beat on each other on the race course and then go have fun afterwards. But I tell you this other story about Cedric. This one year down the road, we were in Spain doing a race, and Cedric beat me by like 35 seconds. Maybe it's 36 seconds. I mean, it just devastated me because I was so angry. I had a grudge about this. And so what did I do? Did I go and cry? A little bit. But I go home, and for the next year, I train, and like, I'm going to see him next year at the World Championships. And that was my goal. It was just cage grudge match. And if you've seen a guy in tights that weigh like 150 pounds, it's kind of funny when you have a cage match. Um, we just run around anyway. Uh, so I go and I race Cedric the next year at the World Championships. And guess what? I beat him. I beat him pretty bad. Matter of fact, I was so far ahead, one of the guys from uh, Team USA, when I went by him, I thought he said, slow down, David, slow down. And I was like, man, I didn't realize I was that far ahead. But I was in such the zone, I guess you could say, that uh, 
That's what I thought he said when he said, go, David, go. And I heard slow down. I was like, oh, wow, I'm really doing great. <laughs> but I beat, I beat Cedric, and I was so excited. So I'm standing up there on the first place podium, kind of like that. And Cedric's on my right, and there's another French guy on my left, second, third place. Guess where we are? France. His home country. And they're playing the national anthem. I'm like, this is great. This is great revenge. It was so worth that. And I remember that picture because I'm just like. <laughs> and they're over there just like. You know, it's like I'm on your territory and just gave it to you. Um, but the sad thing is about people with disabilities, most of them are inactive. What's one of the top leading killers in our country today? Inactivity. Okay, inactivity kills. And most people end up dying from inactivity, sadly, uh, especially people with disabilities. You think people with disabilities like MS or, or, or cerebral palsy, different things, they're going to die from their disease, but they don't. They die from inactivity. Is that not sad? And I don't want everybody to be a triathlete, but everybody needs to do something that's physically active. And we, we've somehow made physical activity for people with disabilities inspirational. Who walked around yesterday? Who went for like a mile walk? Well, did you video it and put it on the, on the internet? <laughs> why, why not? Because it's part of life, right? It's physical activity. So why, you know, when someone has a disability and they do something like everybody else, do we think it was as unique or rare or different? We should expect that. I expected Cedric to train more. <laughs> I didn't care about his disability. I wanted him to train it, and, and this just had this grudge match. So people with disabilities are just like everyone else. They want to compete. They want to have fun. They want to be active. And, but let me tell you about this sport called wheelchair basketball, and that's why I rolled up. This, is, this looks like a wheelchair, right? But it's not. This is a sport here. It's a piece of sporting equipment. If you're going to run, you're going to wear running shoes. If you're going to play football, you're going to wear shoulder pads. If you play wheelchair basketball, well, you need a sport chair, OK? It doesn't mean you can't walk. It just means that's your equipment. In triathlon, I had a bicycle. That's what you need. So same thing. Wheelchair basketball, let me give you some, put things in perspective. Wheelchair basketball is one of the largest Paralympic adaptive sports in the country. But listen, there's only 50 high school teams in the country, 50. Probably within a 50 mile radius of where I stand, there's probably more than 50 high school age teams, right? That's sad, we gotta change that. We gotta turn that around. At some point, every one of us in here are gonna meet disability personally. If you've broken a leg or an arm, or maybe you've injured your eye, uh, something happens, you had a surgery, and you, you maybe have a temporary disability, uh, all of us are gonna meet that someday. And it kind of brings us close to the idea of, hey, I've gotta make some adjustments because you know, even if you become permanently disabled, you still end up with the inactivity, the results of inactivity. So the idea is we all need to be more active. So what are you gonna do and why are you gonna do it? At the beginning of my story, I talked about my daughter, and, you know, and, and she's 15 now. <laughs> I'm not training as hard as I used to be, but it's coming, right? I'm gonna have to run some more. Uh, but what's your reason? What motivates you to need to be more active? When you look at inactivity and realize how bad it is, you need to find that, that Zoe. What's her, that's her name, right? You take that and hold it tight and go, this is going to motivate me to be active. If I want to walk around the block and then maybe I'll get halfway around or three-fourths of the way around, that's okay. Do it. Something's better than nothing. It doesn't matter how little it is. But what will you do and why will you do it? So remember that why. When you're out there going around the block, going to ride your bicycle, or you're going to come play wheelchair basketball with us, highly recommend it. Uh, just hold on to that motivation and realize this. You're worth it. Everybody's worth it. People with disabilities are worth it. You're worth it because you have a family. People with disabilities have a family, and they deserve to have that high quality of life and that longer life. Right? Thank you.